Who second the amendment, Councillor Miller? Thank you, Lord Provost. Um, I'm pleased to second the Green Budget motion today. Um, but before I begin, I would just like to um, echo Councillor Child's comments in her moving speech, both in paying tribute to Councillor Donaldson, but also um, echoing her message as well about centralisation and lack of respect for truly local government. I agreed with her words. Like Councillor Corbett, I'm feeling a little jaded about this political climate right now. As a member of this Council's cross-party working group on Brexit, I'm fully briefed on the facts about how the UK will crash out of the EU in 36 days. And you'll be unsurprised that I can probably summarise those small number of genuine facts quicker than making this budget speech. And in this context, it's hard for politicians and journalists to focus on other topics. So last year when the IPCC published its report showing that climate breakdown was closer, more serious and harder to turn around than most people had been assuming, amazingly it wasn't headline news for more than a couple of days and Bruce Willis wasn't racing against time to save the whole world from apocalypse like he should be. It was pretty hard for people to comprehend the severity of the warning. It was really difficult for people to grasp that. And it was hard to tear UK politicians away from the looming threat of Brexit, understandably, to focus on the actual threat of irreversible climate breakdown, which will come hot on its heels. But I am evolved. I have two opposable thumbs, and I'm able to hold two problems in my head at the same time. So actually, I've been thinking about these problems an awful lot and trying to see the link between them, and I think that they are interrelated. There's issues about class, about poverty and race, and let's face it, power and influence at the core of both of these crises. So I'm pleased to be able to second a green budget today, which I think goes to the heart of the issues around inequalities, in particular, tackling homelessness and care for vulnerable people. Greens see that there is a housing crisis in Edinburgh. I recognise that it's a complex issue and I recognise the need to tackle it on a number of different levels. The coalition's commitment to building new homes is part of it, and the Greens took part, in, took part in the coalition's task force, and we're grateful for the coalition accepting our proposals on things such as a dedicated empty homes officer. But it's not the whole picture, and I think that much more urgent, urgent and targeted action is needed. Our budget goes further, and it provides much more support for our most vulnerable citizens, who often have very complex needs, including housing. We propose targeting additional funding of one and a half million, particularly towards the citizens who need our help the most, which will genuinely take us further and prevent more people from becoming homeless. We propose putting additional money into local teams, specifically to fund preventative work. We believe outreach is another very powerful area of early intervention, so we would provide additional funding for that. And we propose funding to radically change temporary homeless accommodation. Edinburgh is utterly failing people who are staying in temporary accommodation and our budget would transform the processes to ensure that B&B stays are genuinely temporary and that our duty to house our citizens is taken literally to mean provide them with a home. The second area I would like to cover today in proposing the Green Budget is health and social care. Greens propose a record contribution to the Integration Joint Board of over 215 million, which is an 8% rise in recognition of the huge importance of health and social care and in recognition of the real challenges faced by the teams delivering these essential services. Not only do Greens reject the £3 million proposed cut, but we go further than any of the other political parties here today by offering a change fund of £3.7 million and a revenue funding of £2.7 million. We are the only group who have come close to meeting the ask, which has been set out by the Chief Officer. She has told us that she might need to recommend that the Board rejects this Council's funding offer because it's not possible to achieve the savings that they want to make in the coming year. Greens have been dis as disappointed as all the other councillors here about repeated overspending in health and social care. Don't get me wrong. We believe in ensuring that balanced budgets are set for the future, though. We are offering a contribution to the IJB which would actually enable change within a balanced budget framework, rather than demanding service transformation while at the same time also asking to make year-on-year -year efficiencies, which is completely unrealistic and puts health and care of our residents at risk. And finally, on health and social care, it's important to say that Greens have heard and understood the issues raised by the organisations who are losing grant funding. 
as the deputation so clearly told us. We believe in locally designed, locally run services for local people. We believe that residents know what is needed in their own neighbourhoods, and that's why we're proposing a budget today which includes money for grant funding options so that local solutions can continue to be provided where they are most needed. So, Lord Provost, I support a budget that is good for Edinburgh and good for our future, but also a budget that gets to the heart of the massive challenges here and now, which are social inequality and health inequality. I second the Green Budget.